Talk, talk to me. WSRadio.com The San Diego Council on Literacy brings you Literacy for All with your host, Jose Cruz. Welcome to the show. I'm Jose Cruz from the San Diego Council on Literacy. You're listening to the Literacy for All radio show on WS Radio. Our guest for the first two segments is someone from the Juvenile Court Book Club. She is the president, uh, Jody uh, Clisato. Am I saying that right, Jody? Yes, Clisato. Clisato, mm-hmm. very good. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, so glad to have you. Um, how's, how's your schedule these days? So, yeah, it's, you know, it's a busy time for folks. Thank you for having me. I, I, it's great to be on. And so um, let me ask you um, what the Juvenile Court Book Club does and how you became engaged in it. Sure. Uh, so Juvenile Court Book Club is a, an all-volunteer nonprofit, and we provide monthly book clubs for teens who are uh, uh, incarcerated in San Diego's juvenile detention facilities. So usually um, sort of junior high, high school age kids. Um, we also provide tutoring, and um, but but our, our and our goal is to help the kids, the teens, improve their literacy um, and improve their hopefully improve their educational outcomes um, by reading a variety of books with our volunteers. You know, discussing them, um, seeing. Um, more of the world through books, um, seeing what's out there, um, you know, maybe giving them some ideas for things they could do in their futures, um, you know, once they get back on the right track. Wonderful. So I want to ask you, because uh, it's been a while since I've uh, had the opportunity to sit in, but is it mostly um, uh, the, the girls from the rehabilitation facility who are par- participating in the book club? Um, we have kids, the girls at the Girls Rehabilitation Facility, which is now called Urban Camp. We also have girls and boys in Juvenile Hall, um, which is the slightly higher um, you know, level of detention. Um, they're on the same campus, but different uh, facilities. Um, uh, there's uh, two units, one girls' unit and one boys' unit. And, and so you have uh, what we call Juvenile Hall here in San Diego County. But you have a, another location, uh, East uh, East County Detention Facility. Is that correct? Well, there, we used to have a program at Otay Mesa uh-huh. uh, Detention Facility for older boys, but um, that we haven't operated that program in a little while. Uh, we we coordinate with the teachers, and um, sometimes you know, sometimes we have teachers that don't feel like they can work it into their curriculum and their schedule. And so that one, um, we went ahead and, and, and stopped doing the program out there. And, and so with but, the book club, is it, is it primarily voluntary? Do you promote it? And, and, and some of, uh, let's call them detainees, unless you have another name that I can be using. Um, <laughs> they, uh, they, uh, volunteer to be in the club. Um, for, I believe all of our groups now it's, it's, part of their classwork. Well, for the girls, I believe it's part of their classwork. So, for example, in Girls Rehabilitation Facility, the two teachers, um, they, you know, they work with us in the selection of books, and they, um, then they, they have the, the kids read the books as part of their assignments. They do, you know, book reports, art projects related to the books, things like that. Um, and, and so it's also part of their curriculum and then they, you know, have the book club sessions with, with our volunteers. Um, I believe with the boys in juvenile hall, it's a a little bit more voluntary. Um, they all, they all typically read the book, but I don't know if they have the same, um, I don't know that it, if it's worked into their curriculum the same way. Gotcha. I don't know that they necessarily have the same kind of assignments related to the book. Gotcha. Well, let me ask about the books that, that are being read. Um, uh, typically, a, a book club is going to be a, a book that is selected, and then everybody reads it, and they have a conversation about the book in the process of reading it or even having finished reading reading it. Is that how this club works? 
That's exactly right. Just like it would um, for, you know, groups of friends in the outside world, except um, without the wine. Um, (laughs) We do, we are allowed to provide snacks. And so the kids always look forward to getting, you know, cookies or brownies or, you know, candy during our book club sessions. Wonderful. And we'll, and we'll ask later on how people can support um, the work that you're doing uh, with this population of students. Um, but it, uh, it must cost some money to, let's say, uh, invest in uh, multiple copies of, of, of a book that you've selected. Um, is that accurate? It does. We, um, so we, we, get, we apply for grants and we take donations, um, uh, uh, monetary donations. And then we also have a relationship with the county law, uh, county, county library system where um, they allow us to uh, use their um, volume discount to, to purchase books from uh, publishers at a, uh, you know, at a discount price. Um, and so we, you know, we come up with a reading list for the year and then we order the books either, th- either direct from the publisher through that process. Sometimes if we can, if it's a book that's not available that way, we may have to order it on Amazon or something. Um, but yeah, that, that's where our budget goes is to buying the books for, so that each kid, each teen, um, gets their own copy of the book, which they get to keep and you know, take home with them. Um, and we also buy books for the, for the class libraries and for the, you know, for free reading so that the students, um, you know, when it's on their own time, that they have a good selection of books uh, to read. And we take, um, we have the teachers give us suggestions for those as well. Sometimes the students are, you know, really interested in a particular author or a particular genre, and they'll give us wish lists, and we buy those books for them. And that's pretty much the only place we spend our money. We don't, you know, we don't have any paid staff. Mm -hmm. We just buy books. Mm -hmm. Now, I want to come back to that, too, but also a really important topic, uh, something that we've discussed a number of times on this show relating to uh, um, creating access to a reading material that's going to be uh, appealing uh, to, to a young population that is often disengaged with, from reading. It's like, you know, you have to give them things that, that are relevant to them. And sometimes that means uh, materials that are a little bit edgy. How do you decide, um, especially given if they're putting in orders, hey, we want to read this book, uh, how do you decide what, what books um, uh, the young people are reading? Um, we, we have a committee that pre-reads a lot of potential, um, you know, titles. And um, like I said, um, some of the teachers are involved as well, and they give suggestions. Um, we, you know, we also uh, look at, you know, the uh, literary lists and things for good potential ideas for books, and our committee brainstorms ideas. We do have some guidelines. Um, we they we uh, they, they read nonfiction, um, and there's more of that. It, they, they read more nonfiction titles than in the past because of curriculum requirements. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we, we make those fun nonfiction. So, um, for example, The Immortal Life of Henrietta Lacks or um, the book about um, uh, the, the women that worked for NASA. And I can't think of the name of the movie oh, now. Hidden, the hidden book, Figures? But, yes, Hidden Figures. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so book, books like that that are engaging um, nonfiction books. Um, we, they read Shakespeare. Every year they read a Shakespeare selection. Um, they read poetry, um, including bilingual poetry. Um, and, and then in terms of titles, it's, it's mostly um, current contemporary fiction. And it's not, it's not all young adult. In fact, most of it's not young adult fiction. Um, but we, we try to make sure there's a lot of diversity so that we have a titles that include... Um, African American um, lead characters and Asian characters and uh, Latinx characters, and um, you know, so that there's sort of a variety of of uh, experiences and cultures represented in what they read. Um, we read so- some classics, um, but uh, more of uh, sort of contemporary and, and modern literature. Um, but, but but there's a wide variety, and, and like I said, it's not just kid stuff. It's you know, it's it's uh, serious, good contemporary fiction. 
Very good. Um, I, and I know it has to be a little bit tricky um, uh, given uh, a number of things that are out there. Um, tell us, um, just so we can picture better what takes place, how often the club meets and how many students might be in a, in a reading circle. So we meet monthly, and, well, they get the summer off because that's when they're, they get their, you know, their break from school as well. Um, but we, we, re, we meet monthly, and um, for uh, Girls Rehabilitation Facility, we, we, we meet in two sessions, so that's twice. Uh, usually it's the same week or the two weeks in a row, but it's two different groups. Mm-hmm. And then there's one group for Girls Juvenile Hall and one group for Boys Juvenile Hall. Um, the number of students can vary. Um, in the last couple of years, the uh, uh, population of det- in the juvenile detention facilities has gone down, which is great because, um, you know, more yeah, more course. kids are yeah, yeah not being it's detained. It's a good sign, isn't um, it? <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, or they're going to diversion programs yeah. and things like that. Yeah. So, so some of the groups, you know, it may be only 10 students or... Um, but it used to be sort of as many as 20, I think, in I, I've been volunteering for seven years, mm-hmm. and before me, I think there were times when it was even larger, but typically between 10 and 20. Gotcha. And, uh, Judy, um, I'm going to cut you off just because we're going to go to break right now. But uh, we'll okay. be back in a couple of minutes. We're talking to Judy uh, Clissaddle. She is the president of the Juvenile Court Book Club. You're listening to the Literacy for All radio show on WS Radio the worldwide leader in Internet talk. Can you help a newborn baby in need? Sometimes the blessing of birth becomes complicated and perilous. Miracle Babies is there to help. Miracle Babies helps moms and dads give their all to their struggling little baby, but still need more. When you give to Miracle Babies, you help them give more. More skin-to-skin care, breast milk, and love. Go to MiracleBabies.org and give right now. Be their miracle. Looking to be a successful entrepreneur? The virtual assistant industry continues to be a top choice for those looking to start their own business. The problem can be how to become a virtual assistant. Many turn to the Bible of the VA industry, the book, Virtual Assistant, the series, and it's the perfect guide for office managers, executive assistants, and other administrative professionals looking to make the transition from employee to successful business owner. Go to vatheseries.com to get your copy today. Small businesses are the lifeblood of America's economy. Every Thursday, SBA Radio interviews industry professionals and is dedicated to provide small businesses with timely insights and innovations. Visit www.sbaradio.us for details. Homeless veterans and their families are suffering and need our support, but many won't ask or don't know that help is within reach. Veterans Community Services is here to help. Amazingly, about 35% of the homeless in our neighborhoods are veterans with families. Low-income veterans or their friends are encouraged to contact Veterans Community Services and reach out for help with housing and other services. Call now, 800-974-9909. I raised $8,000 to build schools for South African children. After realizing how many people go hungry in San Diego, I now volunteer at a food pantry. I'm spending the next year doing volunteer projects across three countries and helping in ways they designate to be the most helpful. The World Link program at the Joan B. Kroc Institute for Peace and Justice recognizes the potential of youth as agents of social change. Learn how you can help youth become a generation of leaders in action at peace.sandiego.edu. Can you imagine a world without children? A world where children don't play or dream? Or imagine. At St. Jude Children's Research Hospital, we're working every day to find cures for diseases that strike down children. Because we can't imagine a world without children. Can you? Finding cures, saving children. St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. To learn how you can help, log on to our website, stjude.org. 
Donate cash, furniture, clothes, and other gently used household items to Father Joe's Villages and get a nice tax break in April. Every donation is tax deductible. Believe you can make a difference. Be Father Joe. Go to neighborhood.org or call 1-800-HOMELESS to donate today. Talk, talk to me. WSRadio.com The San Diego Council on Literacy brings you Literacy for All with your host, Jose Cruz. Welcome back to the show. I'm Jose Cruz from the San Diego Council on Literacy. You're listening to the Literacy for All radio show on WS Radio. We're talking to Jody Clisado. She is the president of the Juvenile Court Book Club. Jody, how did you get started with uh, Juvenile Court Book Club? What brought you to it? So I am an attorney, and um, I belong to Lawyers Club of San Diego, which is the local women's bar association. Mm -hmm. And I had seen a notice um, seeking volunteers who were interested in working with Juvenile Court Book Club. And um, so I, you know, contacted the organization. We have a website as well, and um, found out the process you need to apply to be a volunteer. Because we're in juvenile detention facilities, you do have to go through a background check Mm -hmm. um, if you want to be a regular volunteer. And um, so I applied and started volunteering and going every month. And um, eventually, uh, and uh, not too long after, was invited to be on the board and have served on the board ever since. Wonderful. Now, um, you mentioned that that, uh, this is uh, all volunteer, that, that your main expense uh, primary expense, almost your sole expense, is, is books. Uh, tell us about the team that's hel- helping to coordinate uh, the different parts of, of the uh, Juvenile Court Book Club um, program. Sure. So we have, um, I mentioned we have a, a reading, a, a pre-reading committee, that we're, or a book selection committee that works on uh, developing the reading list for uh, each um, each unit for the year, because the uh, um, the girls in juvenile hall and in the girls rehabilitation facility read most of the same books, but not all. And the boys usually read um, somewhat different books. Mm-hmm. There's some overlap among all three. Mm-hmm. Um, we also have um, um, people who work on uh, applying for grants, so we get good funding, and we um, uh, you know have regular officers who you know a treasurer who handles our finances and you know secretary who you know, handles, um, you know, our minutes and things like that. Um, and then, and, and we have just a number of longtime volunteers. Many are retired teachers. We have a lot of attorneys, um, and people just in, involved in literacy in general who, um, oh, and we have site coordinators for each site, um, who, uh, coordinate with the volunteers, let them know what the book is for the month, ask for, um, volunteers for that month. We usually have one, one or two, maybe three um, of the adult volunteers who uh, appear at each session. And we have a volunteer coordinator who's been with us a long time who uh, shepherds the, the application process to get approved to be volunteers. Very good. Uh, to be able to come into the facilities. Excellent. Oh, well, um, I had a couple of, uh, I know we have about eight minutes, which seems like a lot of time, but it isn't. So I'll, I'll cut <laughs> to maybe more of the literacy question. And that is, you're going to come across. Uh, uh, individuals um, in your team population that might struggle reading a book uh, that you select for the club. How do you deal with that? Um, well, we during our sessions, we you know we ask to hear from everybody, um, and you know we talk about the issues in the book, and you know sometimes sometimes they talk about the fact that certain parts were hard for them, or maybe it was dense in places, or or. Or sometimes they reference vocabulary words that they weren't familiar with, um, but um, but typically they you know they've been able to read enough to understand the book and and they have great insights into the book. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, you know they they relate them to their own experiences. They <clears throat> they um, you know give their opinions on you know, what they think a particular character should have done. And, uh, and, and at the end of each session, we have them rate the books on a scale of 1 to 10. Yeah. And I'm, I'm sure um, the, their uh, pers- perspectives on, on the content, 
is uh, quite interesting. In fact, that's what I'm recollecting from my my one visit uh, the one time. Um, and, I, and, I, and I like that they rate the books. But um, um, what I'm curious about is um, I think you mentioned that, that, that tutoring is also provided. Um, so are, you, know, are you coming across a percentage of, of, the, of the young people who need help with, with basic reading? Um, there are, um, you know, some of the kids, you know, their literacy or their reading levels aren't, um, you know, where they should be. And um, we have tutors that go in, um, you know, uh, uh, on certain days of the week and certain evenings of the week and help them with their homework, help them, you know, um, you know, with reading skills. Uh, they can also help prepare them for the GED if, they're not, if the kids aren't in high school um, any longer um, or prepare, prepare for the California high school exit exam. Um, but yes, yeah, so we do. We, you know, we, we do provide tutoring. I, I haven't participated in the tutoring part of the mm-hmm. program, but we have some long-term tutors who you know work with them to help them, um, you know, make sure that their reading um, gets to a higher level yeah. and helps them with their other homework generally. And you're um, also working with a fairly um, when you look at uh, youth correctional settings. This is a very uh, transient. Um, Population that is that the stay at the at the girls' rehabilitation facility or juvenile hall is not typically a long one. Is that correct? That's right. And and so sometimes we have, you know, a situation where, um, you know, we'll be sitting in our circle and we'll ask what somebody thought of the book, and they're like, "Well, I just got here two days ago, so I've only read the first chapter." <laughs> um, but we, you know, we do have that. We have um, it is a transient population, and. Um, you know, which is a good thing. We're we're happy when they have they move along and <laughs> and aren't there anymore. Right, I'm with you on that. Let me ask uh, just along those lines. Do you have a favorite story? Uh, somebody who became an avid reader, somebody who came back and visited, or wrote to you, or someone you bumped into, uh, who remembers their experience with the club. Um. Well, my I guess some of my favorite stories are I've had um, a few girls. Um, say, you know, they never, they never read for fun before, mm-hmm. and that this was the first time they ever read a book that they enjoyed just because they wanted to, um, and um, that always sticks with me. That um, you know, it it gives me you know hope that they have opened up a new world for themselves. You know, to, by 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 gaining the confidence that they can read different kinds of books and seeing that there's interesting. Stuff to be learned in different yeah. kinds of books and you yeah. know interesting stories to to hear. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it's not all about school textbooks, all those kinds of things. There's reading for fun. Can you think of uh, a book that was probably one of the most popular uh, with with the uh, club participants? Hmm. Um, gosh, I can't think of what was most popular. I know they actually got a really big kick out of. Um, I think it was Antony and Cleopatra, a, a, a Shakespeare selection, mm-hmm. um, because they did their own, um, um, uh, they, they put on their own play. They did a sort of a modern version oh, okay. of Antony and Cleopatra. Right. Wow. Um, right now in, in Girls Rehabilitation Facility, um, this month they're reading Pride, which is an, a sort of modern retelling of Pride and Prejudice. Um, so I'll be interested to see how that goes. And by the way, right now we're we're doing virtual book club. We're not there in person. Okay. Okay. And and how is that working out? Does that mean that um, that the the club participants are in front of a computer? They're doing things by Zoom. <clears throat> how is that? How is that being done? So the um, uh, they're using a program called Flipgrid. And because their their learning is still remote too, their teachers are not there in person, or at least not. I think they might be there part of the time in person. Um, so the their teachers are providing them with um, uh, you know selected questions the way we would in book club, um, and our volunteers provide questions, um, discussion questions for them. And then what the what they do is the girls video themselves um, addressing. You know, they select like three of the questions, and then they address them on Zoom, and they have the or on the you know on this video that then gets posted, and they can each see we can all see everybody's video, mm-hmm. um, what they've said about the book. Okay, really um, good. 
So you've, you've made your own adaptations. I think that there's a whole lot of that going on right now. Uh, for our listeners, if they wanted to help out, um, is it is, is it um, also is it just donating funding? Is there do you have a need for volunteers? What are things people can do to support what you're doing at Juvenile Court Book Club? Because it's really important. I mean, for some for some of the young people, um, you know, it's it's a, it's an escape. It's an, a way out. Um, you know, from maybe things that they don't they don't want to deal with or things they don't want to. You know, therapy, I guess, is kind of what I'm saying. So we know what books do for us. And so what are the things maybe that that people can, um, how they can contribute to your mission? So we are um, happy to take volunteers. Um, On our website, there is um, uh, information about how to um, get involved as a volunteer, whether as a tutor or a a, a book club uh, participant. And and then of course you know donations are always welcome as well, mm-hmm. um, and that can be done through the website. Very good. And um, what is the website, well. uh, Jody? Website address? It's it's uh, www.juvenilecourtbookclub.com. Just all run together like that. Very good. And it is a .com, not a .org. Right. Although right. we are a a five hundred one c three. Okay. Very good. Yeah, that did that did throw me for just a little bit. Well, we're we're glad to have you on the show and just. Uh, um, uh, value what you're doing, um, taking literacy and literature into a setting where a lot of times there, you know, there's there's not a lot to do, and I think sometimes that's the, the idea. But you're you're helping to maximize the time, um, use the time in a really good way. So really appreciate appreciate you being on, uh, and hopefully you'll come back another time and join us. That would be great. Thank you very much. I really enjoyed being here. Okay, you've been listening to uh, Jody Cusado. She's the president of the Juvenile Court Book Club, and we're all on the Literacy for All radio show on WS Radio, the worldwide leader in internet topics.